All right, hello and welcome everyone. So today I thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different. We're gonna go back um, to our pan pastels and I thought it would be fun to just do like this sort of um, jack-o'-lantern with like a spooky forest in the background. And I do have the line art available for you guys, but I didn't put my trees in the background. What I did was I first drew everything out onto a piece of tracing paper. And um, that way we can just focus on getting the background colors in and then we can lay our trees over top and work that way. So I would suggest doing this. Um, then you don't have to work around all your trees. We can kind of just come back over and use our transfer paper and put that in. Yay, so Halloween artwork. Yeah, I, I thought it would be fun to include, you know, at least um, one like spooky kind of Halloween artwork, you know, in our live streams. So all of the supplies should be down in the description below. And I think I'm just going to jump right into it and start working on our background. Um, good morning, Lisa. Good morning, EB. Nice to see you guys here. So I will be using these soft tools today and I've got some other ones off to the side here just in case. My goal for today is to get our background done and then if we have time we'll start working on the pumpkin as well. And I'm gonna try to do as much as I can with the pan pastels. But I do have a couple of pastel pencils over here off to the side just to add in some little branches and things in our trees. So I've got the Carbothello 226 which is sort of like a dark cool um, gray and I've got the 724 which is a lighter cool gray because I just didn't know which one would be better and then I've got my pit um, pastel from Faber Castell 175 and this is a really dark one so I've got a couple of choices there that I can use and I'm gonna start using this bigger sponge just to lay in our um, our main colors Bologna <laughs> I think I missed something. Did I say Bologna? I don't know. So in the reference picture that I sort of made up here, I've got like a bluish background, but I want it to be more of like a gray blue background, a little bit more muted, and then our pumpkin's gonna stand out. So I think I'm gonna use my phalo blue, my neutral gray, and probably some white or black, depending if I want it to be lighter or darker. So I'm just gonna go in and get those colors, and you can see, my pans here are quite dirty. I don't really bother cleaning them because they're quite opaque and they just go right over top. And I I hope I can zoom in more on the project if you guys want to see just the pumpkin and you don't want to see these. But I thought you'd want to see how I'm picking up the pan pastels also. So just let me know because I know the reference photo is a little small in the corner. But if you guys want me to zoom in more, I can certainly do that. The sponge looks like bologna meat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. So I'm gonna start with that gray and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the phalo blue and just kind of see what color I get. Now I did use masking film to um, put over top of the pumpkin so we don't really have to worry uh, too much about you know being careful around that. And I think I am gonna add a little bit of white in to this mix and I'm just gonna mix those three colors together because I wanna go sort of lighter and as I get to the edges, go darker. It does. <laughs> well, you never know, I guess. So I'm just kind of mixing those colors together. And one nice thing with the pastel mat is you can see the colors mix lovely on the sponge and on the pastel mat. You could put each color down separately and it would still mix on the pastel mat, but I kind of just like to pick them up as I go. So I'm kind of doing like two, two, and one with the phalo blue there and kind of seeing what I get. And I am using um, just white pastel mat for this. You could of course use whatever, you know, pastel paper you have, whether it's the, the Canson Metiens, that would probably be my second favorite. Um, you just won't be able to get as many layers. So I would do a lighter layer of our colors in the background and then you can still go over top um, 
and get the trees in. Or you could put the trees in and then just go around them carefully. It's totally up to you. And when I run out, instead of pushing harder on the sponge, I'm just going to dip back in and get more uh, pastel because the harder you push on the sponge, that's when you're going to end up ripping it because the pastel mat is a little bit more textured of a paper. So you just want to be a little uh, careful with that. But if you're being fairly gentle, you can wash these and reuse them. The colors will stain them, um, but you can wash them and reuse them with no issues. So I'm going to start going in with just that gray and that blue because I want to get it a little bit darker over here. And then I'll probably even add in a little bit of black to darken it up. I so want these pan pastels. Yes. Um, I absolutely love my pan pastels and I definitely need to use them more um, because they are so easy to use, so versatile. And all I have is the 20 um, pure set colors. And honestly, this is really all you need and you can make any colors with this. So as you can see, I use the white to tint it to get a lighter version. I'll use the black to darken it to get a darker version. So instead of having to buy the whole set, you really don't need um, that much. And I'm just dipping a tiny bit into the black there just to get it a little bit darker towards the edges here. These are cleaner than the sticks. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm not a big fan of pastel sticks. I just, I don't like getting my hands that dirty and not that they make like a huge mess or anything but I just, for whatever reason, I don't like the feel on my hands. And I can go ahead though and put these pan pastels on my finger, put it on the paper, and it doesn't really bother me. Um, but there's something, the sticks just feel a little bit more grittier or something. These feel really like smooth and really, um, like they feel almost buttery or creamy and it doesn't bother me. So I might be a little weird in that way, but. And this is just our first base layer. We'll go in and put some more color on top. Um, but I just wanna start getting some color in here and just, you know, seeing how it looks. And of course, as we're going along, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Just picking up some of that gray and white again. And you can just see how bright and vibrant and opaque these are. Like just with a few swipes, they fill in the tooth of the paper pretty well, but there's still lots, um, lots of that tooth of the paper left to do more layers on top. So that's why I always recommend pastel mat when using uh, pastels. And I'm gonna start adding in a little bit of that black in there. And I might add just a little bit of white and gray 
just back in here. Because I really want it to, to be like uh, brighter here, like there's sort of some light, some fogginess going on, and then it's going to get darker as we go to the sides. So I'm just dipping, just adjusting as I need to, and I'm gonna darken up the sides a little bit more, I think, just slightly. <laughs> Thank you, EB. It really does help me out. If you guys can give it a like, certainly. A little bit more of that gray mixed in there too. And another thing I like with these pan pastels is you can see we're not getting like very much dust at all, only when I've brought the pan pastels over the edge here. So they really don't create a whole lot of dustiness unless you um, go on top with the pastel pencils and you're really pushing, you might create some dust that way. But that's another reason I really like these because they don't uh, create a whole lot of, of dust. But I did find this little duster. I had gotten this when I first got my pastels and you can just kind of go along and like poof the dust off your piece instead of blowing on it. I got that off uh, Amazon, I believe. So I can go ahead and try to link it um, down below after the video if you guys are interested. But it definitely uh, helps so that you're not blowing and potentially spitting on your artwork. <laughs> or inhaling any of the, the pastel dust that might be there. So I'm just adding a little bit of that titanium white over this way. And I don't want this to be blended perfectly. I want it to look sort of like, like fogginess in the background. So I am leaving some of those brush strokes. And I will go ahead and blend this lightly after, probably with a cotton swab. And then we'll see if we need to lay any more down or if, um, if I find it's good. So I'm gonna start working on the side a little bit more. Just gonna darken slightly. Um, EB says, I love the color of the background. Thank you, thank you. When I did the mock-up uh, one, the reference photo over there, I thought I wanted it to be like more blue. And then as I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, no, that's not like, that's not spooky blue. <laughs> If there is such a color as spooky blue, that's not it. <laughs> so I decided that we were just going to mute it down a bit. Just going with that phthalo blue and black right now. And I'm working the color mostly on the corner. And then once I realize a lot of it is off, I'm just going to lightly start blending it over into our other colors, just pulling it over slightly. And I'm more like, like dabbing and just lightly rubbing it. I'm not, I'm doing it pretty quick, but I'm not really pushing hard. And I'm going to get just a little bit sort of coming at the top, but I don't want to cover the top completely. I just want it to sort of fade out almost like a vignette, but not quite. Okay, and I'm gonna start bringing that dark color down here. So I'm just gonna go in with the phthalo blue and the black because I want it to be pretty dark down here around our pumpkin. It's a little, little too blue.
Now some of the bottom of the pumpkin is going to fade into the background. So we don't have to worry about um, being too precise with the bottom of the pumpkin. But I sort of sketched it out just in case anybody wanted to go in and just have like the, the pumpkin. If you want to just follow along with the pumpkin, you can do that. Or um, if you want to have your pumpkin stand out a little bit more, you can certainly do that. It's up to you. And I did tape the borders of my pastel mat this time, just so I'd have a nice clean border around it. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Just depends what I'm feeling that day, I guess, when I decide I'm doing it. I'm just grabbing that black, just trying to get this nice and dark down at the bottom. And I'm trying to make sure it goes right up to the edges. I'm just going to wipe a little bit of that excess off because I just got some hard edges there and we'll just lightly blend that out. No big deal. Okay, and I'm going to take a little bit of this raw umber and just get this into the bottom a little bit so it's got sort of like a brownie tint as well where there would be like some foliage and stuff down at the bottom. But we're not going to bother with that because there's not much room down here anyway. That's a spooky blue. <laughs> Good, I nailed it then. I nailed it. <laughs> Somebody can look at it and go, that is a spooky blue then. We're doing it right. And I'm only bringing that brown about halfway or maybe a little less than halfway up the pumpkin area. that's about where our trees are going to stop the base of them and they're just going to fade into the background okay so I'm going to wipe any excess off of the sponge and I'm actually going to grab my garbage can and bring it right in front of my picture here. And I'm going to use this little puffer and just puff the dust down into the garbage can. It's probably better if you puff it away from you, but... Or um, you could even pick up your picture and just tap it off into the, the garbage, but I taped mine down on the top and the bottom just so that it wouldn't move while I was doing this. Um, Lisa says, it's almost like a dark fog rolling in. Yeah, that's kind of what I had in mind, like a fogginess in the background. And EB says, yes, it is. I love how it looks so far. Oh, thank you guys so much. So I'm just going to take a cotton tip now, just a cotton swab. And I'm just really going to get this blended out. And this is sort of helping to push the, the pastel into the pastel mat. And you could use your finger for this if you want to. And maybe we'll try that. Because I find sometimes my finger works a little bit better. And you can see the size difference between the cotton swab and my finger. I can get a lot more done quick with my finger. <laughs> And the pastel mat is not that rough that it's not, it doesn't feel rough on my finger. It feels very smooth, actually. And so what I'm doing here is just 
pushing any excess pastel down into the pastel mat so that when we go over top, we've still got a lot of our tooth left. And this sort of just helps create that soft blend that I'm really looking for too. And making sure I've just got it right up to the edges. And I'm doing this quite softly too because I don't want to risk um, grabbing hold of the masking film that I've used there and pulling that up. So I'm really just almost floating over the pastel, but just enough to kind of get it to smooth out. There. So I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel and just wipe my finger off. So I'm just going to wipe it off and it will stain your finger a little bit, but you can see as I wipe it, you know, now nothing's coming off. Um, but as soon as I go wash my finger, it'll be fine. Sometimes I'll have baby wipes by me, but I've forgotten them. So I will have a blue black finger for the rest of the stream, but that's okay. So I actually kind of really like how the backgrounds turned out with just that one pass. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just start putting the, the trees in. Um, EB says, I've been using the mineral spirits on my artwork. I did yesterday. What a great purchase. Thanks. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm so glad that you like them. So I'm going to try to line this up with my pumpkin. It doesn't have to line up perfectly because, of course, the trees are just wherever you want them in the background. So I'm gonna just try to get it close enough and I will, if I can find my tape, tape it down at uh, two places at the top. So I usually like to tape it down either at the corners or two places at the very top, just so it doesn't shift and move on you while we're putting our trees in. And because we've got a nice dark background in, I'm gonna go ahead and use my white um, graphite paper here so just let me get this tape down real quick. If I can find the edge of my tape here. I got the full range of Prismacolors I used on the artwork. So fun, yes. Prismacolors are great to start with because they do have a nice range of colors. Um, but they're also so creamy too. So they layer and blend really nicely. Okay, so we'll try to keep this in place here somewhat. Something like that. And I'm just gonna grab that white tracing paper. So for this, there is a shiny side and a matte side. The shiny side goes down towards your artwork because that's got the graphite on it. And I'm just gonna lift this up and just scoop this in. And I'm trying to get it right up to the top of the edge, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And you don't have to use a full sheet like this. You could cut your tracing paper down into little parts and then just Move it around as you need it if you only have a small piece of tracing paper. And then what I like to use are these, like, I think they're embossing tools maybe because it's got a really nice fine point there, but you could use a pencil, you could use a pen, you could use whatever you have to retrace your, your trees down. Um, the EB says the pencil sharpener is awesome. I bought, I actually want to get another one for the regular pencils. I'll show you on my stream later. Oh, perfect. That would be awesome. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly 
trace over these trees. And of course they don't have to be perfect because they're, they're trees, right? And once I get one done, I just like to lift it a little bit just to make sure I can see the line going there. I hope you guys can see that. So I don't want it to stand out too much, but I want it to be enough that I can see it, right? And these lines do not have to be perfect. Actually, the wobblier they are, the better because they're supposed to be spooky trees. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that, but it's kind of true. So don't make them, don't try to make them perfect. And you can go ahead and just freehand this onto your background as well. You could go right in with like a brown or a black pastel pencil if you want. But this is just how I thought to show you guys. Um, Cause it's easy because then let's say we mess up and smudge something or whatever and we have to cover it up or we need to change the background. We can always put this back on top and retrace things out. And especially for the pumpkin too, you know, if you lose an area or whatever, you can put this back on and trace that area back over top. And uh, it just makes it a lot easier. You already have it drawn out. So this is gonna take a couple of minutes to do. So if you guys have any questions, you certainly can ask me. It's spooky season. Everything is spooky. <laughs> yes. Oh, are we still going? Hmm. I'm just getting an error message. Are you guys still getting? Oh, now it's saying no data. It's buffering. Okay, and now it's back. Now it says it's healthy again. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So where did I get this paper? So the pastel mat I actually got at Delta Art. It is um, an online art store in uh, Canada here. And the tracing paper I got at my local Michaels. But you can also find the pastel mat itself on uh, Amazon and stores like that. And I think it's a lot cheaper in the U.S. on the U.S. Amazon than it is here in Canada. Um, and the tracing paper you can find on Amazon too. Okay, it was just funky for a minute and then it came back. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. It just likes to be a pain in the butt sometimes. And I even still restarted my internet um, before the stream just to make sure everything would be okay. So I hope that answer your questions, EB. But pastel mat, it doesn't only come in white, you can get it in a bunch of other colors as well. But I tend to gravitate towards the white one because usually when I'm doing it, I want my colors to really pop and stuff. So that's why I usually typically get the, the white version of it. But if I'm doing sort of like animal portraits or something like that. Sometimes it's nice to have like that color underneath already. So then I would be more apt to choose be the thing with my stream.
Okay, so let me guys, you know, let me know if the stream ends up going out or anything. Um, I don't know why it's it's being funky today. But I'm just going to continue on and getting these trees in quick so we can keep going with the background. Can you use a pencil to trace the white on? Yeah, you could use a, a pencil, a pen, you could use whatever you want. I just like doing this stylus um, just because it saves my pencil lines that I've already put down. But you can certainly go over top with anything that you have here. I just try to use like one that has the smallest point possible so I get a more accurate uh, point. But yeah, you could go over top with anything. And then before I take this off and take the tape off, I always like to just go look and make sure I haven't missed any areas. So I'll kind of pull it back like this and look. And if we've missed anything, we can always put that in um, with our pencils after. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this tracing paper because I like how that's turning out. I'm just going to get rid of that off to the side and I'm going to get rid of this too. So now you'll notice that this will transfer some of the color onto it. However, you can wipe that off and still use this or you can still use this over top because you're just transferring lines down and you'll be going over top of it anyway. All right. Now to put in some of our trees, we want some trees to be a little bit lighter and some trees a little bit darker. So I'm thinking some of these bigger trees are gonna be like more in the foreground and some of the smaller twiggy trees will be more in the background. So I wanna choose lighter colors for those. So I'm gonna go down to one of these soft tools here and I'm gonna pick this one that has an edge so I can kind of follow along with my tracing area. And I don't know if this is really showing up that well on camera, but I can still see the trees over here in this area. So I'm gonna make a brown, a light brown color. And I'm thinking for some of these, maybe like our raw umber and our blue. And then I might have to add in a little bit of white too, or even a little bit of gray maybe to get some of these more lighter muted trees and I'm just gonna follow along here and get these colors in. So I'm just picking whichever trees I want to be a little bit lighter. And I'm sort of doing like two, two and two for this here. And as we get more to the center, we can lighten them up even more. So did you make a decision to stream next week on Halloween? I think I will. Because I'm not really doing anything during the day, during the morning, and I think most people aren't either. So I think I'll just go ahead and stream like at my normal time. And actually I've been thinking about maybe pushing the stream back a little bit um, because I notice more people joining, you know, once the stream's been going for a half hour to an hour, I feel like that's when more people start joining. So I've been debating even pushing the stream ahead by like a half hour or an hour just to, you know, let more people be able to join at the beginning, maybe. So we'll see. That's just something I'm I'm thinking about doing. So... If anybody has an opinion about that, then, you know, make sure to leave a comment. Might even add a little bit of white into this one here. And this is pretty small, so I'm not gonna be able to get too much detail. I might have to add some with the pencils in here, but I just want to get a rough idea of where this little tree is going to be.
Um, just let me know if you change the time so I can be here. Okay, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. So again, I'm just using the raw umber, the gray, the phalo blue, and a little bit of white just for these lighter trees that I'm getting in here. And I might even do like um, a little poll, like I've been doing some polls on my community tab. So I might even do a little poll for it and just see, you know, how people feel if they want the time change or not. Because maybe some don't want it or maybe some, you know, don't care. Okay, so I'm seeing what other ones are little little twiggy trees. Um, EB says, I'm good no matter what time you want to go on. Okay, thank you, EB. You're so sweet. Just depends. We'll see. If we get more people showing up, I might even put a poll up on uh, this, the chat there if I can figure out how to do it just to ask people what they think. Now I see this little tree back here. I'm gonna get this one a little bit lighter just to break up some of the darker trees. So our lighter trees, when we do them lighter, it sort of will push them back into the background a little bit more and it'll give our background a little bit more depth and then when we go on top with our darker trees it'll help them push forward a little bit and I'm trying to go up to the edges too to cover up where we've got our white outlines that we drew down Do whatever works for you and what will help your channel as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously it, it helps more when more people are here watching, then YouTube will tend to push out the live stream more to, to other people and show them. So it's sort of like a, you know, a catch. The more people you can get watching, the more people will watch because YouTube will push it out. And as it gets down into the dark, I'm going to stop adding that white in and just let it be a little bit darker and maybe even just the blue and the brown there. Okay, and I think I'm going to do one more really light one, maybe uh, this smaller branch coming in here. So it'll be coming down this way a little bit lighter, I think.
So how's everyone's weekend going so far? I find Sunday just comes so fast. And then I'm always like, no, then Monday's coming. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start working on some darker trees. So we've got one over here, the big one here, there, and I almost feel like I wanna break up these ones, but I think they'll be fine. Maybe I'll do like this one, like a medium. So maybe we'll put that in. Maybe it won't be as dark as the other ones. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll do this one sort of as like a medium one. Just adding just a hint of black in there just to get it a little darker than the other one. So it's gonna pop a little bit more, bring it forward. Going good so far, uh, just been a relaxing weekend. Finally put my pumpkins outside. Ooh, the ones from your stream you did last weekend. They, they turned out really cool. So I'm just sort of doing like two little swipes in each pan there. Um, been good, looked forward to today. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Lisa. You guys are so sweet. You guys are why I keep coming back. <laughs> You know, I really enjoy these Sundays because it, it forces me to get the artwork done too, right? Because sometimes you're not always in the mood to art, but when you know somebody's there, like expecting you to be there, sort of pushes you a little bit more to get it done. And I like that. So I might um, do a little bit more of the background down here just to fade those bottoms of the trees out. But I kind of like how they're looking so far, and I think I'm going to make this one just a like a medium darkness too. And then we'll go in and put some really dark trees in. Yes, it makes me look forward to seeing the process and it helps me understand too. Oh, thank you, EB. Yeah, but what I'm gonna start doing too is like, so when I'm done this part today, I'm gonna go and do like a, like an edited version of it and sort of do like a voiceover. And I'm gonna put that up sometime this week, just like a quick edited voiceover um, because YouTube tends to push like shorter videos because people will tend to watch them longer. So they tend to push those out a little bit more. So I think I'm going to start doing that with the lives and then that might help bring in some more people too. You never know. Or if people are just interested into the, the short videos, that gives them sort of like an option to still be able to watch and enjoy my content, but they don't have to watch the whole, you know, hour and a half or however long stream. And then the ones that want to, like you guys, you know, you're here and I'm here for you. Cause I still definitely enjoy doing longer videos. And um, I think it's like the teaching aspect of it that I enjoy, so. All right, so I'm gonna start getting a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna do the, the brown and the blue and the black and see how that looks. And then I can always get it darker if I need to. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I see that as well. The shorter videos get more views. People's attention spans are not long. Yeah, absolutely. So I find normally once, you know, the live stream's done, I'll get like a good handful of views afterwards, but like people aren't watching the whole thing, which is fine, right? If you want to skip around, that's totally fine. But I think a more edited, like voiced over version of it where you can just quickly get an idea of what we did, I think that might help too. So we'll see, I'll try it and see how it goes. And So this process is a little bit slow, but it will be worth it to really create a nice background. And you can see how the pans are getting quite dirty. If that bothers you, you can just go over with like a, a Kleenex or something and just wipe the top layer off and they will go right clean again. But I find I always end up mixing all my colors anyway, so it doesn't really bother me too much. But if I wanted like a, a pure blue like this, I would just wipe that off and then go ahead. But I try to keep, you know, the messy areas to one side so I've got sort of a clean side to go with. And some of that blue background is still showing through a little bit in the trees, but that's okay because it's sort of giving them that like a bluish tint to them too, where it's in like this blue light. So I'm kind of liking that. Um, EB says, loving the spooky trees, feeling the Halloween spirit. Yeah, of course I had to do something Halloweenish. I mean, we did the cupcake for our last um, tutorials, but got to do something a little more spooky, I guess I should say. I'm just going to darken it up just slightly, a little bit. So I'm just grabbing those colors again, just going over it. There. We'll move on to the next tree.
Oh, hello, Terry Lynn. Welcome. Thank you for joining. We're just working on our background here. And I apologize if I'm a little quiet while I'm doing this. I feel like, you know, there's only so much to explain and then you're just kind of repeating yourself <laughs> over and over. But uh, since you're just joining, Terry Lynn, if you've got any questions or anything, let me know. And I will certainly explain again. Okay, so we'll move on to this tree here. And I'm gonna get, uh, actually I might make this one a little bit darker because this one's coming in front of this tree. So we'll keep this one not, not as dark and I'll darken that one up. So I'm just gonna add just a hint of gray in there just to push that back just slightly, but not as light as our lighter ones. And I might even lighten some of the lightened ones up a little bit. We'll see. Look self-explanatory. <laughs> oh, thank you, and you know I'm here for you. Thank you so much, Terry Lynn. Yeah, there's only, you know, so much to explain, really. But I try to explain as best I can when I'm doing something new or different, um, just in case anybody wants to follow along then you certainly can. Oops, not the green. Let's not get the green in there. I don't know how many times I've done that when I'm not, you know, not really paying attention and I'm just whoop, 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 and I grab whatever color and you never know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just gray this down a little bit. Just a hint. So I'm just adding a touch of gray in there too. And I might even have to go over top with the gray and just lighten it a little bit more because I want these trees to be a little different. Some mistakes are the best art. Yes. Yes, they can be, <laughs> for sure. So I'm gonna go in with that gray and just lighten up just a little bit. And then we'll darken this one up and that'll push this tree back a little bit. Just a little different. And that's a nice thing when we're using pastel mat like this, that we can go ahead and make those changes because we've still got some, some tooth underneath. And I'm 
just going to go ahead and darken this one up. going to make sure I make it a lot darker towards the bottom because I just want these trees to fade off. Okay, so I, th I like how that's coming out, I think. And then we'll just do one more little tree on the side here and this one again will be pretty dark. We'll have it coming in from the side and this will just help frame our pictures when we add something on the edges. I like to add either a tree or some sort of thing onto the edges of my artwork just to help frame the picture and sometimes it doesn't call for that but just depends. Oh good morning so Cal colorist Della how are you doing this morning, Della? Add a little bit more of that black. this right down and I'm grabbing a lot more of that black than I am the other colors right now and I'm just gonna sort of fade these into the background here because I don't want the trees to have like a specific end sort of I'm just lightly going over them so the ends sort of just fade off into nothingness. And then what I'm gonna do, just wipe any access um, off onto my thing on the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend these trees in with my finger, but before I do that, I just wanna see if I can put a pole up here. I don't know if I can do that now. Wait, maybe I can. Okay, so now that we have a few people here, I'm just going to put a poll up real quick because I've been debating um, pushing my stream time back by either a half hour or an hour because I, usually people start cut, jumping on around 11 o'clock now. So I just want to see if you guys want me to start an hour later so that you're able to join at the beginning or if you guys, you know, don't care or you don't want to be here at the beginning, that's totally fine. But I'm just going to put a quick poll up. Push the stream back an hour and then you guys can either say yes or no now I hope that's gonna work <laughs> so let me know if it put um, a poll up for you guys to kind of answer because I don't see it on my end oh okay I do see it came up now there is a vote one for yes so push it back by an hour and while you guys are filling that out, I'm just gonna go ahead and start blending these trees out. And I'm just gonna use my finger that we blended before. It's got some dark um, pastel from blending it before, but it's all off, so it's not gonna really affect our trees. And once we start blending these, it's gonna push them into the background even more. So I wanna be kind of careful because I don't wanna get rid of it completely. 
And what I might do real quick, because I do have a little bit of dust coming up because we have some pastel on, I'm just going to take that little puffer that I have and puff my pastel into my garbage can real quick. So I wouldn't recommend pushing it back towards yourself, but this is where I have my garbage can. I'm just holding it up to my desk and then we're gonna blend these in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use some pastel pencils to put in some little branches and stuff in our background. So I'm just coaxing this dust down and I'm trying to sit back as far as I can so that I don't risk breathing any of this in. There. So this is really super handy for that. And I forgot I had one. I actually found it um, a couple of weeks ago. So really cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start sort of pushing our trees in. And all this is doing is really making sure that the, the pastel's down into the pastel mat. And that way it's not going to, like if we sit it up or if we go to frame this, um, the pastel won't fall off because we're really pushing it down in. Now there's a little spot there where I can see um, our white outline. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get some more color and just cover that up. Just like that. And I'm doing the lighter ones first. And then we'll do our dark ones. Now you could use, you know, a blending stump. You could use whatever really for this. You don't have to necessarily use your fingers but I really wanna get this pushed into the background and just really help fade these trees out just slightly. You can see just how the pastel doesn't really move around too much on this pastel mat because it really grips it well. Another plus for pastel mat. And I'm just wiping off each time if I feel like I have a little bit too much on my finger and then I'm gonna start going in and getting these darker ones. Actually, we'll do this one first. Yes, if you guys could give um, a like to the video, to the, I guess the live stream, um, that definitely helps out. I do appreciate it. Um, Terry Lynn says, yes, it worked. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So all these little steps that we're doing just make a difference with how the piece will come out in the end. Okay. 
and I see that everybody has voted yes to push the stream back. So I will do that starting next weekend then. We'll start it at um, 11 o'clock. Is 11 o'clock so like around this time? Is that good for everybody to start? And then if you guys are able to join at the beginning. If that works for you guys. Because of course, you know, I'm doing this not only for me, but for you guys too. And I'm just lightly blending around the bases of those trees just to make sure they, they fade off really nicely. So that's sort of our where our trees are at right now. Um, yes, thank you. Yes, please. Okay, perfect. That works out perfect for me as well. So that's what we'll do starting next weekend. It will be at 11 a.m., Atlantic Standard Time, so I will have to try to remember that. I'm just going to grab a drink here and then we'll go in with some pastel pencils and just create some little twigginess in our background. <clears throat> so I grabbed a few pencils here because I wasn't quite sure how dark or light I'm going to need these, but I've got um, two from Carbothello. I've got the 724, which is sort of a light cool gray and I've got the 726 which, which is a little darker and then I've got the 175 from the Faber-Castell Pit Pastels and this is a dark like a very dark brown almost like a gray brown so depending what we need I'm gonna try first because there is like a little branch area that comes off here and I'm gonna see if I can get that in with this color, if it's going to stand out too much, I might add a touch of this one in just over top. So I'm just fixing the ends of them there. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, your kitten agrees too. Okay. <laughs> the, the kitten has an opinion. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, so I'm going to start with this light one and I'm just going to get some lighter little branches back here going. Maybe, let's see, maybe I'll have some like coming off these trees just a little bit. just to kind of fill in some space here. And I'm just gonna lightly blend them in. I don't know if those are showing up for you guys. So I might actually just switch to the darker one, the uh, 726 here. And I'm gonna start getting some of these in. So on our reference photo, you can see sort of some branches like coming over across. That's what I'm gonna start getting in here. And I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. It, it is showing up a little bit. So this is that sort of tree that's behind a little bit. I'm just going to get some of this in. I'm just creating some little off branches here. Just in a few places. Now one nice thing with 
these sort of branches that we're doing is the more like twiggy like and the more like messy and um, uneven you can get them the more realistic it's going to look And because these are such small areas, I'm probably going to come over top with like a blending stump or something and blend them. And I'm going to get one just coming up here in front of these trees. And maybe a little one poking up here. So I'm sort of going away from the reference photo a little bit. Um, but I want like a hint of, of this stuff in here. So maybe we've got some coming off from this tree. You can do a, as little or as much of this as you want. And I'm using the 726 from the Carbothellas for this. So I like that, how that's looking. I'm just gonna grab my blending stump and just quickly blend these in just lightly. Not everywhere, but just sort of where I see there's a little bit more dust and it sort of needs to blend with the tree a bit. And some of them I might even come over with my finger, just lightly. Because I really want some of these to, to fade into the background. So I actually think I like using my finger better for this. And I'll just wipe it off if I've got too much. Next time I'll have to grab a baby wipe <laughs> so that I can, uh, you know, clean my fingers off but I'm just grabbing a, a clean finger. And I'm just lightly tapping it in. I'm not trying to smudge these twigs around. I just want them to sort of just fade lightly. There, and I think that pushed them back a little bit more into the background, just doing that. Okay, and now we'll take that um, 175 and I'm going to create some darker ones coming from the darker trees now. And 
this is a slower process, but again, it, it definitely makes a difference, I think. And where it connects to the, the branch, I'm just making it a little bit thicker. We've got like a thick branch coming out here. The branches helps the artwork. Yeah, I think so. I think it does. So I'm going to have a couple of thick ones coming out. Just kind of We'll give this one a nice big one and maybe its branches come way over. And this color definitely fits better with our darker trees, so I do like that. And where we've got those lighter trees underneath, you can see there's a little bit more pastel down, so I've got to push just a little bit harder. Now this is a, a harder pastel pencil, so it is gonna push over top of that lighter one, whereas like our Carbothellos are a little bit more lighter and creamier, so it's not gonna be able to push and get over top of our, um, some of the thicker pastel that's already down if that makes sense. And then maybe that branch just starts curving down in front of these ones and we'll make it a little bit thicker. And I'm trying not to lay my hand on my artwork. And I'm trying to give different thicknesses to the branches here. Um, it's really looking good. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. And we'll like push these ones in a little bit too because I don't want them too, too out there, but I do want, you know, some. That one will fade like that. And then maybe this one's got just a little branch coming somewhere. So maybe just a little one like this. I guess that's a little thicker. <laughs> That's okay, it's just got a few branches coming off of it. Maybe another little baby branch this way. So 
So this is the fun part. Like you can follow the reference photo that I did up to a T, or you can kind of do your own, own thing. Maybe it's got one that's kind of going up funky. And then let's have one coming. So this is in front. So let's have another one coming over this way. And I kind of like to draw a few like main branches coming off and then then I'll do like the little ones. And you can see these pastel pencils do create um, more dust than the pan pastels do. But that's okay because we'll just get rid of it. And then maybe we'll have one coming from this tree kind of in this area. And then I think that's where I might leave that. So we'll have it sort of coming like up to fill in um, this area here. Something like that. And then I just go back in and fill in and thicken things up where I need it. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Now some of these areas where it's not taking it, I might have to go over top with a little bit darker, like maybe I'll grab a black, but I'll see how it blends in once we start blending it in. Um, but obviously we don't want it to be like dark here, dark here, and not dark here because it's supposed to be going over top of that tree. So just because we've got some pastel down, we might have to go and adjust that. I'm just gonna make these a little more like twiggy at the end. Maybe this one comes down. Good morning, Shadow. Shadow says, good morning, Naomi, EB, Lisa, everybody, Della, Terry Lynn. I'm loving the background. I'm going to have to rewatch from the beginning to see how you did it. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, it was actually really fun and easy to do. Um, EB says, I can't believe next week is the end of October. Already time has flew by this much, this month. Yes, I'm assuming it's morning for everyone, but I could be wrong. Well, it's morning for me. <laughs> um, I'm not sure for everybody else. Um, actually, I don't like how this one curves, so I'm going to bring that one down a bit too and just create maybe a couple little offshoots from it. I 
Okay, so I think I kind of like that and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing and just lightly, just lightly blend these in. And if I feel like I've got too much, I'm just wiping it off. Um, 7.27 a.m. here. Oh, no wonder here you were um, a little bit later and you want me to start a little bit later. That is early. Wow. Tara Lynn says, my son's birthday is on Saturday the 30th. He's going to be 22 years old. Wow. That's exciting. Well, happy early birthday for him. So all I'm doing here is just making sure that the pastel from the pencils are really pushed into the pastel mat so that when you go to stand this up or if you're gonna frame this or whatever, um, all that pastel is not gonna fall off. And then we will dust off any extra pastel. And I don't want to push these back too, too much, but just a little bit. So this is sort of a little tedious process, but as you guys can see, it does make a big difference. Or I, I think so. There's no one right or wrong way to do art though, so. Yeah, and I think some of these areas, I will come over maybe just a little bit darker. I don't know. Maybe I like how it looks. It's almost like the, the branches are kind of fading in and out. I kind of like that because it is kind of maybe adding to that spooky look that we're going for. Now I'm not trying to push hard on these either. I'm just really just lightly, almost like glazing my finger over top of them. Thank you very much, EB. Yes, if you guys could like, and if you think anybody might like this, you know, then go ahead and share it. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because we will be continuing on next weekend. And Shadow, you weren't here earlier, but I did put a poll up um, because I've been thinking about pushing the stream back about an hour because that's when most people tend to join anyway. And, um, Everybody said yes. So starting next weekend, we will be streaming at 11 a.m. Atlantic time. So it's just an hour back from when we usually start. Just so that everybody's able to be here at the same time. 
and it's fun. And I don't mind, you know, doing this by myself, but of course it's always fun when you've got, you know, other people with you, right? <laughs> So I'm just trying to make sure some of these spots are really blended into the tree. And I think I like how that's uh, coming out. So let me know what you guys think, but I think I like how the background is so far. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this little puffy thing um, for any excess dust that's on there. And I'm gonna push it down into my garbage can, which I will have at the end of my desk here. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second so I'm not inhaling this. And that didn't actually make a whole lot of uh, dust, just a little bit. So now my hands are completely a mess, but as you can see, like once you start wiping it off, it just really stains your fingers. So I'm not too worried about that. I'll go wash my fingers off after. Let me see if I've missed anything here. Della says those branches give a cool and creepy vibe. Yeah, that's what I was going for. So I'm glad I've achieved that. Um, yes, I am in Canada. Yep, yeah, I am in Atlantic Canada. Um, my big zero is next year. Your big O? Like for a birthday, you mean? Um... Yes, the Atlantic time zone. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that background. So maybe um, it's 1130. So maybe we'll leave it there and we'll jump into the pumpkin next time. And what I've done with the pumpkin here is I've cut out with the masking film, but I've cut out the little stem here and the eyes and the mouth separately. So I'm hoping I can just peel the pumpkin part off we can get that down and then we can do the stem and the eyes and the mouth separate so we don't have to be too precise and go around that. And again, I will use my pan pastels for this as much as possible and then we may go in with a few pencils and do some detail underneath, um, just depending. And then maybe we'll do some fireflies in the background but I don't know if that takes away from the creepiness. So let me know if you guys think fireflies or no fireflies because now that I'm looking at this background that I've got down, I think the fireflies might make it less creepy. I'm not sure. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think. And if there's no last minute questions, I will finish this up then. I'm just going to get a drink of water. And then just remember next weekend, I'll have this stream up sometime during the week here. And you can always press the little reminder button on it. Make sure you have the bell notification pressed as well um, so that YouTube will you know, remind you and let you know when I'm going live. Um, but it will be 11 a.m. Atlantic time. Now I realize my zero comment sounded rude. No, that's okay. I've decided that I am no longer aging with my birthdays. So I am staying the same age that I am now forever and ever. So that's, <laughs> that's not a problem. Thank you so much, EB. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. Go back and um, watch the beginning if you want to see how we got that like misty uh, background in. And I will see you guys next weekend. And of course, I'll have, you know, a video up sometime this week. Um, I just finished the palette full packs one. So that should be up probably Tuesday or Thursday sometime um peeking out of the trees <laughs> yeah so thank you guys so so much for joining as always um if you haven't please give this uh stream a like and the picture looks fabulous looking forward to next weekend thank you um thank you guys so much so i'm hoping we'll get the pumpkin done next weekend but we'll see how much we can do and then i'll probably put a another poll up um either the week after depending how far we get on this um for what our next project should be okay 
Um, and if you guys haven't seen it, I have a couple polls on my community tab, just asking like what mediums you want to see more and what subjects you want to see more. So if you guys haven't gone and voted on that, I would suggest to go ahead and vote on that because I will, you know, pull from those, um, from those ideas. If you guys want more watercolor, more botanicals, color pencils, whatever. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I am going to go ahead and wrap this up, as I've said already like three times probably. <laughs> so you guys have a good day. Bye, guys.